A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Sunday edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report edition 80 for the 11th of February. Hope everybody is safe and well wherever you are. Just before we get into today's video, I want to make um, a little bit of a mention with regards to some recent comments that they uh, have been perhaps perceived to be either inappropriate or offensive. Um, these comments will not be tolerated and will be removed as well as the the user as well so um i'm kind of trying to sharpen things up a little bit uh, on here on the channel uh, because i do have people uh, drawn my attention to certain things and uh, these things will be looked at addressed and dealt with appropriately so i just wanted to make a little bit of a mention with regards to this let me know if there's anything in the comments that i have not noticed or uh, moderators have not noticed uh, and uh, that it will get it will get removed and dealt with um, because I feel a little bit lately in particular as soon as the weather forecast perhaps turns in any way shape or form there is people unfortunately out there to try and just uh, bring bring myself down um, and you know it's, it's not going to work um, I, I do work very hard I, I do have a full-time job away from weather forecasting as well it is a hobby and um, basically it will not um, it won't be a, it won't be tolerated so um, for the for the sake of everybody who views these videos the subscribers uh, non-subscribers whatever I want this to be a platform which is fair decent and people have respect for each other so I just wanted to start today's video by making mention of that. I do warmly welcome comments, uh, you know, even if it's constructive criticism, even if it's a disagreement with regards to something that's been said, 100% uh, support that and not understand that. But I don't really need, uh, you know, any form of abuse on this platform because I'm doing it uh, off my own back. And uh, like I said, I do have a, a full time night shift job as well, so I'm quite busy. Um, but there is a lot of uh, hard work put into the, these forecasts. Um, and I'm only sure, in my opinion, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be 100% right. So far, so good with regards to the winter forecast, but we, we do all know that uh, this warm spell is uh, longer and stronger than anticipated. And there is question marks with regards to the potential cold as we progress through deeper through February. Now, we know that there is a high likelihood of uh, stratospheric warming taking place in a, around a week or so. And uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with regards to what atmospheric response that may have. So a lot of the indicators, a lot of the climate drivers, such as the NGO, even the strat warming that took place at the end of uh, January um, has not responded the same way as I thought it would do. The MJO and the strat warming uh, in previous times during the course of this winter has played out quite well. But I, I still I stand by the fact that I think there is an element of uh, El Nino and the warmer overall backdrop have an influence on the this this current particular warm spell because this is this here what we're looking at right now is actually the the, the two meter temperature anomalies for the the front running 11 days of february so we are now approaching the middle portions of february and i'll tell you what it would take a heck of a lot for this anomaly within the northern hemisphere this is looking right down over the arctic north america is here you can see Greenland colder than average because we've got the, the we've had up until now the positive uh, North Atlantic oscillation, but we have got a tremendous amount of warmth over Southern Europe, over much of North America here, and within the Arctic region itself. So, despite the fact that we've got the the deep Arctic oscillation, many of us, including myself, is asking where is the cold, and is it going to come, uh, you know, d down the road? That is going to be the question um so this is the ecmwf weeklies here this is the 10 hpa mean zonal wind projection this is compared to average and you can see it was firmly above average in recent uh, uh recent times 
the models are all indicating that we uh, go into the majority of the members at least anyway indicate that the winds go into reverse so that uh, means that we do have an official major sudden stratospheric warming situation expected sometime around the 17th of the month here you can see that it drops below the zero line meaning that we do get a reversal in the mean zonal wind so we'll wait and see what happens with regards to uh, the cold potential uh, this you know 70 percent of all major sudden stratospheric warmings constitute cold in the uk and ireland here this is the the what would this be the ecmwf weeklies this is the north atlantic oscillation you can see its interpretation is that the, the North Atlantic Oscillation is actually negative at the moment here and it stays largely negative uh, through the next week, couple of weeks. Um, if you notice here, the Arctic Oscillation 2 is uh, generally in a negative state as we go over the next wee while here. Now, this is uh, the GFS Ensemble upcoming five day period. You can see here that we continue with this. Uh, jet stream underneath a weak area of high pressure in the northwest atlantic baffin straits region here uh, into day six through ten you notice here that we are seeing height rises out of iberia northwards all the way up through the uk and ireland towards greenland here and interestingly day 11 through 15 granted it is pushing the potential of cold further back i'm not going to deny that um or get away from that fact but you can see here that the model is indicating a negative North Atlantic oscillation, Arctic oscillation, as we go towards this time frame, which would be the 21st through the 26th of February. See here the negative over North America, negative over Europe, representative of colder than average temperatures. Speaking of colder than average or temperature anomalies, full stop, you can see here this is the upcoming five day period. And the blowtorch remains in place. You notice here we've got colder conditions across Russia, across Scandinavia, where this is now the, the fourth consecutive month of a temperature below minus two compared to average since uh, the winter of 2009-10. So very cold conditions across Scandinavia, but it is in a backdrop of warmer than average overall, uh, as you've seen in the uh, temperature anomaly chart just a wee, a wee second ago. You can see a uh, pretty warm central and eastern North America here. You can see a warmer than average UK, with exceptions of northwestern uh, uh, Scotland here. Day 6 through 10, you can see here that we continue with the warmer than average conditions. Actually, it warms up further across the UK and Ireland, extending from Morocco all the way up to uh, Scotland. As you can see, colder conditions now start to show up over North America, as you see. Day 11 through 15 here, finally. Uh, cooler across northern UK versus warmer than average across the south. Warmer than average continues across central and southern Europe, colder than average across Scandinavia. You've got uh, warmer conditions uh, starting to show up across the lower 48 versus a colder than average across central and western Canada, if you notice here. Warmer than average across Greenland, thanks to the block developing over the uh, over Greenland. So, made mention uh, back only on Thursday there, we looked at uh, the edition 79 of the Global Weather and Climate Report. That was meant to be last Sunday, but unfortunately I didn't get the, get a video done last Sunday. Um, and I thought there's too many things going on at the moment to, to avoid doing a, a Global Weather Report. Excessive rains, over a foot of rain falling on uh, downtown Los Angeles. Nearly a year's worth of rain falling within a day, a day and a half, which is a pretty exceptional for this part of the world. We also seen a monster snowstorm across eastern Canada. Uh, I made mention of uh, Nova Scotia, but also uh, Prince Edward Island uh, and adjacent um, provinces re recorded some remarkable snow cover and snowfall within that event back last weekend, I think it was. So, um, yeah, a lot of things going on, and uh, it's quite hard to keep up, actually, with the amount of things that are going, going on around the world at the moment. But I wanted to make mention of this here. This is a tweet here by Dilan uh, Jarawala. I hope that's the right pronunciation. And um, But uh, I made mention of the, the El Nino situation in recent days, 
and the comparison a little bit to 2016, albeit we've got a warmer Atlantic versus what we had back in 2016, where it was actually slightly colder than average to the south of Greenland. Um, but I think the overall situation is that this El Nino is definitely having an influence on the current warm pattern and the refusal of the pattern trend change. I think I still think it, it, it probably will, but you can't get away from from what the models are indicating here. But this is an interesting tweet here with regards to the El Nino. He says um, that the CPC's Oceanic Nino Index has come in at plus 2.0. Uh, degrees Celsius for the November through January period. This means that the ongoing El Nino event ranks among some of the strongest in recent history, trailing behind only 2015, 97, 1982 and 1972. This also makes it a super El Nino, which uh, is, is rather interesting actually because I know some folk get a little bit antsy when it comes to the mention of a super El Nino. I Personally, I think it's it's on the strong end as opposed to Super El Nino, but uh, based on this information being provided by uh, Delan, uh, indicates that uh, this is reaching criteria of Super El Nino at uh, plus two Celsius above the average, which uh, which is rather interesting. Another one uh, tweet here by the, the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center uh, a transition from El Nino to Enzo neutral is likely by April through June 2024. 79% chance of that happening, with increasing odds of a La Nina developing in June through August 2024. There's a 55% chance that we flip from the current El Nino to probably weak La Nina state by the time we reach the middle of middle and second half of this upcoming summer season. So an El Nino advisory remains in effect. La Nina watch has now been issued by NOAA. The, uh, so that, that's quite interesting stuff, if you ask me. Let's go to the all-reliable Terry Goose based in Vancouver, Canada, for some information going on around the world at this moment in time. Very, very warm temperatures compared to average in Ontario, Canada at the moment. 16.6 at Sarnia and Windsor. 15.7 at Toronto Pearson Airport. This is the fifth highest in February and 0 0.3 Celsius from the record of early February. So remarkable warmth taking place across uh, many parts of Canada at the moment in time. Uh, also a temperature here of minus 55.4 uh, at the Ita uh, Italian base of Concordia on February 8th, a new seasonal low for the ice this is a near record cold for the uh, for this time of the year anywhere in, in antarctica so temperatures down to minus 55.4 uh, at that particular um research station in, in antarctica back to canada again remarkable warmth in uh, winnipeg this is a, a tweet by julian c an incredible streak of warm weather in um, in winnipeg and uh, yesterday it was the sixth consecutive day of record high minimum temperatures and the ninth record in the past two weeks, including tide records. This ties March 2012, the infamous warm March, of course, not only across North America, but also across uh, the UK as well, where we've seen uh, temperatures into the 20s remarkably uh, across parts of Scotland. We've also seen record breaking warmth um, on the North America side as well of the Atlantic. This ties March 2012 for the most high minimum temperature records during this warm spell. Finally, down to South America here. Temperatures as high as 38.0 Celsius was recorded at San Pedro de Atacama. Elevation 2,416 meters above sea level. Thierry says that this is among the highest temperatures ever recorded in the world at such high altitudes here. And the El Nino situation continues to drive widespread warmth across South America at the moment here. Unfortunately, I did actually show you the temperature anomalies for the Northern Hemisphere. I didn't show the Southern Hemisphere, and I do apologize for that, but we will look in a little bit more detail at the Southern Hemisphere in next week's Global Weather and Climate Report, Edition 81, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lots of things coming up this week on the channel, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.